Whoa. What's that sound? What are we doing? <laughs> We're getting uh, chauffeured. Well, it's definitely first. It'd be so comfy back it's here. It's comfy. Like, look how comfy this is. This is great. We're parked. <laughs> So this is different, we're in the back seat this time. We're in the back seat. Why are we in the back seat? <laughs> so yesterday you texted me late last night, which is fine, which is fine, it happens. And you say, hey, we got this new, you got this new upgrade. And it is? Heated seats in the back. Which is crazy. So how does that even work with, up, how do you upgrade your heated seats via an app? Like, is that well, how this works? I went into the app. I checked the available upgrades. Yeah. I pressed on the... Uh, available upgrade that I hadn't purchased yet. Okay. $400 Canadian. Hit upgrade. And I got an email. And the email said purchase was successful. And just to wait you know, if it's in park and I'm able to turn the seats on. So let's go do that. Climb it on. And then we'll turn the heated seats on. There we go. So this is how you turn the rear heated seats on. You just go into your HVAC system here and then off to the left, there is a section to go in and change, enable them, etc. or turn them off, or you can go all off just like that. I'm already feeling cool. That's great. Just a little. Yeah. Any, any minute now, it'll be nice. Oh yeah, that actually is faster than I thought. Yeah. I was cool. like, that seems like placebo effect, but, uh, but now my yeah, now my, my tush back is, is uh, feeling it. It's like, oh yeah. Oh, so is it back? Nice. Is it back and I foot? I think so. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. This is nice. So obviously this is a software upgrade because you can use the Tesla yep. app, but it is hardware built into this vehicle. You have there's heated seats already installed somehow. Obviously from they the were factory. Installed from factory. They didn't want to have too complicated uh, a process, so they're the same. For all the, the Model 3s. Okay, but these were disabled when you got it. The standard range plus mm -hmm. is only available without the rear heated seats. Unless they're planning on changing something, you, you never know. This is an additional feature that you have to buy, uh, but that's just what Tesla does. It's it's their model, they, the, their software model is to do more upgrades and to have revenue from, from things like that. Yeah, and it's, and it's interesting because it's almost like I was trying to get, wrap my head around this a bit because again, there's already installed, Tesla's already put the money into this machine, into the product itself because it's all hardware, it's built in. You can, as a consumer, you can decide, you know what, I don't want that feature. I'm not going to spend the money right now. Mm -hmm. I don't need it, it's not required. So you just check the box, I don't want it. And you don't pay that money because right. you're not going to use it. Yeah. But then, down some time road. passes you're like you know what it would be nice to have some heated seats or it'd be nice to have this thing okay. or i'm going on a road trip i'm going to turn them on for yeah. my guests yeah, like when we went to we did vancouver and the through the rocky mountains and stuff and it was cold and we had people in the back seat i'm sure we would have loved to have oh, heated seats yeah i think so even i felt uh, a little guilty sitting in the front with heated <laughs> seats and not having to sit back here and so it's two yeah. months too late by the way yeah tesla um but it Oh, well. it'll, it'll be good for next, next time. time it's interesting as a consumer to buy it and to have the option not to some people are going to argue saying well if you're already putting the money into that tesla into the manufacturing of that why don't they just include it but it, it's kind of like what they did didn't they do that when they did the cheaper standard range the lower one has less features but they disabled the did they not disable like tesla disable the battery so it was less it was a software locked battery software yeah. locked. so same battery same battery, that software. the software range was reduced slightly. So they could sell the car for cheaper mm -hmm. because you weren't get, you weren't paying for the features. Right. So I don't know what the business model works with Tesla and what their... It's their lower profit margin really on yeah. that. And this is a way for them to sell one feature and get extra revenue down the road. The same thing with self-driving. If you start to see the features actually become better and better. Yeah. And you pay for it down the road and they are charging more because it's better than it ever was before. Because now that I'm looking, I'm looking at a Model 3, Model Y, I wish it was sooner, but Model 3, and I've looked at that, and that's like a $7,000, oh, yeah. 200 bucks. You could save the, the money right now. Yeah. And don't get that feature. Exactly. And in a year, you're like, you know what? I do have 10 grand kicking around, or I do want that yeah. feature, or it's better now. I'm gonna drop the 10K and get that. Yeah. And you can do that, which, what what vehicle you can you do that with? Any other vehicle than Tesla? None. Can you like drive your your Honda Accord or your GTI like mine and say, you know what, 
I want to upgrade my back seats or I want to upgrade my horsepower or, mm -hmm. or upgrade something and you just like spend the money and do it. I want navigation features added, you know. It's insane. <laughs> lane, that is... lane keeping and stuff like that just added. Not over the air, that's for sure. So the one thing I look at for the heated seats and for upgrades like that with the Tesla, I was kind of trying to illustrate it or like understand it a little bit more. And it's almost like if you buy an iPhone, of course the new iPhones have, I don't know if it's like, is it 64, 250, 256 and something like that. Yeah. But so imagine right now you're buying a new iPhone and you don't need the 256 gigs. You just simply don't need it. You want the lowest is 64 gigs. So you buy the 64. Imagine if your phone had the capability of going up to 256 when you needed that storage in the hardware, not in the cloud, like in the storage, you could pay the extra money later on. But right now, like I bought a new iPhone 11 Pro, I only bought the 64 gig, which was very dumb on my part because now I do need more storage. I have to buy, sell my phone and buy and then, one that's 256. Uh, so that's yeah. loss of money, that's loss of time, all that stuff. Yeah. Later on, you're like, you wanna need more memory, you can just pay 50 bucks more. The difference that it costs you between the 64 gig and the 256 gig, that one, and you could pay to upgrade it. And to me, that's kind of how Tesla is doing it. This is the first upgrade like this that we can actually show uh, the consumer what what is available with a Tesla right now. What 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 can you buy now and then upgrade later and, and things like that. Is anybody else like, you know, Canadians that have the Model 3, are you guys doing the upgrade? Is it worth it? Is the 400 bucks worth it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's still in the middle of winter. Tell us what you think. We'll uh, include a poll up here. And thanks, Scott, for telling me about it so that I could get on this and get this video out. So thanks a bunch. Yeah, that's awesome. It is pretty awesome that with a $400 upgrade, you have rear heated seats, mm -hmm. but you can also control it from the app. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please subscribe and share if you like the video. And if you do like it, then hit that like button and comment below any comments you have for us. And if you want to buy a Tesla, use our Tesla referral.